Hello and uh, good morning. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. This is our daily blog. It's working out to be daily, Jared, and we're enjoying it. <laughs> we're up to eyeballs at the moment in tax returns and uh, other things going on, but this is a, a great welcome break from uh, the challenges of the day. And as you'll know, in the UK, they've made further announcements. Um, Jared and I are fishermen and uh, we had a message that we can't go fishing because of lockdown in the UK. But I understand that there's been a bit of an outcry amongst the fishing community. And uh, today the government are going to announce hopefully some more flexible rules for us to be able to go fishing safely. Most fishermen fish safely when they go out. They like to take their rods and they fish in isolation or in pairs like Chad and I. You know, we live together so as father and son and we're in a bubble. So personally I think as long as you're responsible and you're careful, um, I think it's important to get out into the natural beauty. And actually it's good for your mental well-being. So I'm hoping and praying that the government will be a little bit more careful with this and uh, you know we're still going to be very careful and we're not going to I think in London now one out of 50 people in London have got the virus and I've just had three new clients today come down with it so my heart goes out to them but it is a real threat out there but we've got to manage and balance it carefully anyway I wanted to give you an update on the breeding pair that we had yesterday and see whether they're still locked so let's have a little look at Titus and uh, I think it was Coco, wasn't it? Should we have a little look and see, Jan, and see whether they're still locked? Anything going on? No, they're, they're apart now. So they're apart. So when they're apart like that, Jan, what would you normally do? What would be the next stage of... Put the male back in his home. Yep. Clean the female out. Yep. And let them get ready for a meal on Monday. Yeah. Now we've had a really long sustained lock and you should check your animals a couple of times in the day that they're locking because they can lock and unlock in a day and they can relock again. So just because they've locked and unlocked doesn't mean to say you have to pull them out straight away because that could be a mistake. Give them at least a day to have that romance and it only takes one lock for it to happen but let's make sure that the male has got the full opportunity to get in there. So I would say at least a day even if they've unlocked don't be tempted to kind of move them out and stick them into another female because you want that female to get the very best of Titus. And then breeders have different things. Today we're going to talk about rotations and we're going to be talking about, um, I think it was Wayne, if you look at one of his questions on our 300 giveaway video, he asked the question that he wanted to know a bit about how we rotate our animals. And I think it's a good question because we're right on the pinnacle of the breeding season right now. And I think a lot of people out there who are getting into this probably don't know how to do the rotations. now. There isn't one way of doing it. Every breeder has their own approach and every breeder may be right. So it's not a question of saying someone else is wrong. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna share how we do it and what's worked for us. But you've gotta try and work out that what, what, what works for you and your animals. Every animal's different. So the key is to be flexible, open-minded and think outside the box. So we'll do that later. We won't video the cleaning and everything. We'll do that a bit later, Jared. So shall we now move to our planning? So Jad and I had a 15 minute session during cleaning this morning to work out today's pairing day. We've had 48 hours since they've eaten. So Jad reassures me that these animals are ready to breed. And we've gone into the rubs, we've had a look at the state of the females and we've had a look at the state of the males. So that's the first thing you would look at um, to make sure that number one, the females and males are not in shed. You don't want to be putting a shed male into a shed female. Although I have done that by mistake and they locked. In fact, both of them shed out each other. <laughs> they actually used each other to shed. So, you know, that, even though that's the general rule, snakes will breed if the urge is strong enough, whether they're in shed or not. So I would recommend not breeding in shed, but they can. So we've gone through our collection and we've worked out the six pairings we're going to do today, aren't we, Jared? Yeah. Shall we take everyone to our plans first and then we'll go to the animals and show you what we do. Sure. So let's go do that. I'm going to switch cameras so Jared can talk through the um, plans, Jared. So we've got here, uh, Jared, if you could find our spreadsheet. Now, this is our breeding plan for, was it 2021? Okay. So if you go at the very top, we can see, and maybe go left so we can see the breeding plan. So first of all, we start with all the males. Now, can you see what we've got here? The first male that we've put in red is the pastel leopard, 100% het clown, 50% het pied. So he's first time breeder. We've put him to a couple of girls, um, but he 
he's only locked once so he's a bit tentative breeder and we're a bit worried that we're putting him to several females that may not go so we've actually put a red alert on that one and we're going to use our backup male to cover because we are worried that three of our gills may not go because he's not sexually mature enough even though he's up to weight and he's up to age he's not really showing his pure stud abilities at the moment he might come into his own next year but you've got to start somewhere and you've got to give it a go but always have a backup male ready to cover so let's look at the girls he's going to Jared he was going to pastel clown to a normal pied and a yellow belly pied yeah but um, he hasn't locked he locked once to the pastel clown and then twice actually to the pastel clown yeah and then nothing else okay so what we've done is we thought there's an awful lot of red that's telling us that we could be in a danger position here where we're putting in an immature male, not immature, but inexperienced male that may not be up for the job and we could waste three of our females very easily here. So we've given him a good run for his money. He's had three months at it and he's obviously done a couple of locks. So good to him for achieving that. But who's our backup male now, Jared, that we've decided to use? So we've put our the pastel clown female is now going to the pastel clown male to get some killer clowns. So yeah. And they've locked yeah. once, twice, three times. Right. So we've got a better chance of hitting killer clowns. So originally you wanted to get the leopard into the clown, didn't we, Jared? And that yeah. was the whole point part of our Batman project. But we may have to wait a year for him to come into fruition there. So And now that we've got an actual leopard clown male, it's not as important. Leopard clown female we've got. And male. Have we? Who's Hercules. That? Oh, Hercules, of course we have. I forgot about Hercules, yeah. So there we go. Um, you can see how we're adjusting our plans as we go. Let's move down to the rest of them, Jared. Let's see who's up next. So what is the pastel clown going to at the moment, then? So today we're going to put it to the yellow belly pied. Yeah. Because the yellow belly pied hasn't had any hookups the whole time. Right. We want to get her hooked up as soon as possible, so... Yeah. She'll be going there. Okay. Right, let's go do that now, then. So we'll come back to this in a second. Jared, show us how it's done. So she's actually in shed. <laughs> <laughs> so here is an amazing planning job that I did earlier. Okay, so now we've got the rub. We, I should have told you, I've cleaned out these elements and I forgot to tell him this one's in shed. So we're going to hold back on that one. Where should we put him? Is there another alternative female he can go to? Yep, so he can go to the butter, which she's in shed. She's in shed. <laughs> and she can go to the banana pie, banana spider, who's also in shed. So <laughs> He's that one's having a rest. <laughs> change plans oh, there we go <laughs> so you're seeing this live ladies and gentlemen it's um this is what you have to do you kind of have your best laid out plans you have to oh, change no, wait, wait, wait. i did have it right yellow belly pied it's going to it's already gone to the clown okay so plans have not changed plans were mistakenly conveyed okay so yellow belly pied okay so this girl here pastel yellow belly pied buttercup right he is down here so Hopefully, he's shed out last week, so he should be good to go. How's he looking, Jack? Now, before we put the male to a female, what's the procedure we do? Let's just go through the procedure, Jack. Check and make sure they're not going into a shed. Yeah. Make sure there's no sign of any mites. There shouldn't be. Your collection should be clean, but always check. Yeah. And also just check his face, make sure he hasn't got sick or anything at all. No RIs, nothing. So he looks healthy to me. His eyes look good, he's not going into shed, and he looks like he's alert, his tongue flickering's great, so. And he's an absolute stud, isn't he? So I, he's I ready to go in. And it, this is his first time breeding, he's locked with virtually everything we've put into, isn't he, Jared? Yeah. So let's have a look at the girl as well before he goes in. So before you check the girl, so Jared, as we look at the girl, I don't know if you can see what's going on there. I cleaned her just a minute ago. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have cleaned her up, because they do like a bit of hormone and stuff in there so I may be making a mistake today and I've over cleaned should have left it really but let's see what happens and we'll give you a report tomorrow on how they get on but so you just pop them together always put the male and the female yeah now King Austin would normally take out a bit of sperm uh, yeah and, do that. and he'd that's put overkill. it on the female but sorry. that's overkill you don't really have to do that okay if you've got a picky male maybe but now you've got, a, his job. you've got a yellow tag Jan. what's the point of the yellow tag that just shows us that this, this is paired up and that the male was paired up as well. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about checking them in the day other than these ones. Okay, let's go back to the next pair. That's the first one. Yep. Next one we've got our Banana Super Pastel Orange Dream. And he's going to our FNF Calico today. That's Apollo, isn't it? Yeah. Apollo, yeah. He's going to the Did Calico. Did they just recently lock them? They locked on the 17th of the 12th, 2020. 
Okay. So they were the last ones that need to go together. Okay, let's do that. So I'll grab two of these. Okay, we inspect both of them now. Apollo, when I was cleaning today, he was gagging for it, wasn't he? He wants to come out and make love. Let's look at what his behavior is before we take him out, Chad. Let's watch what's going on here. So look, here he comes. He wants to come out, look, look. He's searching for a female. That's a good indication, isn't it? He's one of my favorite snakes, Jared. Yeah, he's beautiful. He's just so lovely, isn't he? Beautiful animal. And he's a really good breeder as well. I just hope he's fertile. But he's locking to everything. <laughs> We're putting quite a lot of three girls. He's having three girls this year. And he weighs about 1,100 grams, doesn't he? But he's yeah. stopped feeding for the last six weeks. So we've got to keep an eye on him that we don't overstretch him. And there she is. She's shut out and she's looking healthy. So we put those two together. Yeah. I didn't do a thorough clean today. You can see there's a little bit of messy Your smell. The back. But that's what, they need. that's what you need. You need that to be in there to help them breed. And let's see how they get on, Jared. So what we'll do, just to quickly say, is we'll put these together and we'll leave them at least 24 hours. Yeah. We'll come back and we'll check on them throughout the day. Yeah. See if they're hooked. And if not, I think we've left them up to three days before. And four. then four days. As much as four, yeah. And then seen a hook. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. Just make sure that they are fed. Yeah. And are happy and healthy. He was showing an interest in the yellow belly pied there, Ray. <laughs> and Ray is also giving off hormones at the moment. She's not had a lock yet. She's the one that gave us the pumpkin bites. So she's looking for a mate soon as well. But let's go back and see what we've got on our breeding schedule. So the next one, Jared. You okay there? Yeah. Yeah. I realized that I put him to the pastel yellow belly pied instead of Ray, the yellow belly pied. Oh. Well done, Jared. I'm glad, I'm glad I mentioned that to you. So It would have been fine, but that's not his plans. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, it's so easy to make mistakes in this, you know. Oh, there we go. Now, she was definitely a receptive to a male. Look at that. She definitely wants a partner. And she's up to a good size now, isn't she? She looks really healthy. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. Well done, Jared. Hopefully they get together. <laughs> I'm glad that Jared's alert and uh, knows what's going on. <laughs> I rely on your alertness, Jared, the younger generation. Okay. So a risky move, yeah. especially without a baby. Yeah, sleepless nights. So, All right. Yeah. Desert Ghost is next. Enchi Carrot. Desert Ghost NG 50% hit caramel. Yeah. Let's go into the to our fire. Right. So we'll put that that's one. That's Fire Girl Flame, and that's Johan to fire. So let's check the male, make sure he's good. Johan's in that rub there, Jared. And he looks happy. Beautiful animal. He's a Desert Ghost NG. And what are we trying to produce here, Jared? What's the outcome that we're looking for? So here we want to get some Enchi Fire Het Desert Ghost Possible Het Is it Caramel? Yeah Het Caramel So when you put Pastel and Fire into Desert Ghost it really does go well doesn't it Jad? Yeah So we'll put these ones in here Yeah She's always up for it She's definitely keen for a mate isn't she? You can see She's a bit So she's made her tub a bit wet but sometimes that's alright when you're breeding Yeah a little bit of lubrication So I should leave it as it yeah. is it Not creates smells of hormones. Yeah, it creates the atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah. Now then, there we go. To do what they need to be. Thank you, Jared. Right, and um, we need to move to the next pairing. We're halfway through our pairings today, so, so I hope you're enjoying this. Next one is our lesser spot nose to the pastel twilight. Okay, so we're trying to create super less super spot nose, which is called a power ball, isn't it? Power ball. Yeah. Now this is one that is delicate project because there can be kinking and other issues with this but we're going to have a go and we're going to try and monitor temperatures really carefully to see where we can produce a super spot nose power ball so this is a lesser spot nose male now that was sold to us as a female a female and we popped it and we realized that um he's definitely a male not a female so we had to change our plans there and that's part of the course sometimes that happens and this is Venus, who gave us some beautiful eggs last year. She's just shed out as well, looking great. And she's a pastel twilight, which the twilight jam, what's in the twilight jeans? Cinnamon spot nose. Cinnamon spot nose. They've locked up before, so they've used to locking up. 
and he's still eating at the moment, which is great because when you've got new males going in for the first time, if you can offer them food and they're eating and breeding, that's the perfect scenario, isn't it, Jad? Yeah. Because it sustains them through the process. But don't worry if they go on fast. We did a video yesterday on fasting. Have a look at that if you've missed it. It will reassure you not to worry in certain circumstances when the fasting kicks in. So next one is our pied 100% head albino, 50% head toffee. That's good, Kiki. Kiki. Yeah. To our albino leopard, 50% head pied. Yeah. Daisy. Okay, let's get those out. She's down here. Daisy's going really well. It's her first time as a mum. Yeah, she does go. Her. And look how big she is. I mean, she's building follicles. So as a female gets wider and wider, you'll notice that the follicles are growing bigger and bigger. And the ideal scenario is 25 millimeter follicles to 35 millimeter follicles is the ideal time to put a male into the female. But we start much earlier than that to encourage them to get going early, don't we, Jad? Yeah, we just put them together. We have no idea about follicle size, we just put them together. Yeah, you can get if ultrasounds you, though. Yeah, if you've got an ultrasound machine, you can be more fine with it. But. The bigger your collection, it's worth spending a couple of thousand on an ultrasound, and then you can, before you waste your mail, so to speak, you can actually monitor the size of the eggs and then put the mail in at the critical time. But females can store sperm up to, how long, Jared, have you, do you think? Well, I've heard people have clutches the following year which are from the previous male that they've been with. So a year. So I think they can store it for up to a year. Did you know that there's a rattlesnake in the States that scientists have studied that can store sperm for over five years? Wow. And I think there's even theories that you can be born, a female born without seeing a male can have sperm as well. Yeah. You know that? I didn't, but. Yeah. It's really interesting. So what happens is that the female release the sperm to her eggs, that's called ovulation. So when the sperm is released, she stores the sperm, she's got some storage spaces in there. And then when she's ready, she releases that sperm into the eggs and then you get your ovulation. So when we talk ovulations, that's the critical time that you'll see them swell up and they'll, t they'll tail suck. But Fino is looking huge and Elvis just shut out this week. So he's, he's an excellent breeder. He's been an excellent father for us last year. Mm. We're hoping to produce some more Cine Pieds here, aren't we, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get a couple to put on Wolf Market because I know yeah. a lot of people are interested in them. Yeah. We're building up that. Yep. All of our locks. Is that everything today? done? That's everything. Okay, now what we haven't done, Jared, and I think this is the next part of the film that I think we're going to share because people have asked us how to sex an animal. And I think yeah. when we started this, Jared, um, you know, the first thing you must do before you put a pair together is make sure they're male and female. Yeah, it's fundamental, but a lot of us have never probed. You can probe a snake, can't you? Yeah. You can buy a probe kit. And I've never probed. I went to buy a snake, Jared, from a reptile keeper down in the Bournemouth area. Yeah. And I fell in love with a G-stripe and I really wanted her. And I said, just to be safe, could you please just sex it for me? Yeah. They got out their probe kit and went to the back of their shop and all hell broke loose. She wasn't having it. She was wriggling so badly that the probe damaged her. Mm and had to go into hospital for two years two months yeah so this thing can be dangerous if you don't do it right so yeah so i've been reluctant to get a probe kit and yeah i i don't i don't trust myself for the probe kit so okay i just pop so there's not a right and wrong way of doing this ladies and gentlemen no. because some people are very happy with probe kits and we're not criticizing anyone that's using a probe kit here i would suggest that you find out what works best for you and if possible do it with someone that knows what they're doing i mean i didn't have that luxury but i watched a lot of videos and i tried it and it did the job so talk us through who are you so going to this be this right out? here when i first sexed it as a baby it was a female but now that i've learned how to sex properly i now know it to be a male so here lovely pie trackers on this boy so what we can do here is you want to make sure they're a bit relaxed you grab your thumb on the cloak and pull it back a little bit like this and you put your other thumb here and you push down and roll. See those hemi peens? So, why? See if I can zoom in on that hand. Can you see it? Sorry, it's not in focus. If I touch the screen, touch, it, might yeah. touch the screen, it'll go in focus. Yeah. So, they're the hemi peens. There you go, it's in focus now. Yeah. Okay. It was in focus. So, that means it's a boy. Yeah. Okay. We'll do another one quickly. Um, 
So the girls don't show as red. They don't girls, as red. I'll show you a girl so you can see. Okay. Um, let me just go here. So this is from the same clutch. She's possible het pied, possible het albino. She hasn't got the trackers, so I don't think she's pied. She might be though. Yeah. So again, let's bring it down lower. Take it to the table over here. Okay. So you want to make sure the, sn the snakes relax because if they're not relaxed, they'll fight you, and you won't be able to pop anything out. Yeah. So again, let me get nice and close in here. Thumb by the cloaca, forefinger behind it. Pull back on the cloaca, just a little bit, not too hard, and then roll back. See, there's no hemipenes there, just these little white bumps. So definitely a girl. Definitely a girl. No hemipenes. God, it's quite a technique there, Jared. I will have a go later. I won't do it on camera because I'm okay. a beginner. Once I've um, got experience, Jared, I think I'll be willing to be confident enough to have a go on camera. But. I will I'll practice. Do, I'll do okay. one more male so people can see. Okay. So if you're coming close, we'll do one more. And again, it's sort of like you're rolling a tube of toothpaste. You don't want to be too hard. You don't want to be too soft or you'll get nothing out. Yeah. So let's try it one more time. Do you want to come this side? It might be a bit easier. Yeah. So this one. What's that? You found some sperm already? Yeah. Is he producing sperm? Right. Okay. That's the other thing, is when you're doing this, they might put some sperm on you, but don't get freaked out. Pull back on the cloaca, halfway up, roll back, hemipenes. Yeah, you just zoom in on that. See that? Wow, really dark, Chad. Then you let go, allow it to go is back that in. two two penises, two, I see? Yeah, so that's got, hemipenes. Why, why have they got two? I don't know, to be honest. I think the female... And there is two. a little bit of sperm. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. So wash your hands after you're done. Yeah, but Jared, I was just going to say, I think the reason they've got two is because the females have got two different tracks as well. So the eggs come from two different tracks, I believe. And yeah. if one of them is not functioning, the other one's going to work for them. So it's probably evolved over many years to be the safer way for them to produce because I think that's the reason, Jared, is that the reason they've got two is because the females got two channels as well. Should we show a baby? You want to do a baby? Now, let's talk about popping babies, Chad. I don't like to see babies pop straight away. It kind of makes me cringe when I see them coming out of the eggs and people are popping them. I like them to be mature, a little bit bigger. I like them to be about 100 grams. 100, grams. 100 grams. Yeah, I don't want to put a baby hatchling under strain sexing straight away, personally. I just struggle to do it, so okay. I, wait until, I wait until they're about this size, just before we sell them. Just so over 100 got, grams. Who have we got here? So this is a Mojave Ultra Mill. Yeah. And if you zoom in here, pull back, roll up, hemipenes. Let me get this, I'm not putting it yet, Jared, let me get it. Yeah, the camera's not focusing very well today. Let Tap the screen. Go. Yeah, it's going in now, show me. Oh, just oh. weed on me. Nice. See, so there's two red things, they're hemipenes. That's a boy. And this, one's, a boy. Oh. this one's sold, isn't it? This one, yeah. We've got someone that's paying us in the storm this one, so he'll pick them up. Wash my hands again. So, yeah, be prepared. You can, you can yeah. get weed and food on. So, try and do it when they're empty stomach. But and that's how you pop a snake. You wash your hands every time you touch a snake, Jab. Now, that's good. Well, Is that good theory? Because if there's a hidden disease on a snake you're not aware of and you're touching one snake to the other, you could pass it on. Yeah, clean a hands. Lot, are... A lot of top breeders handle yeah. all their snakes, Jab, with. Um, Thank you, Jared, for showing that to us. I really appreciate that. That was, he made it look so easy. Oh, I'd love to get to the point where I can do that that easy. So I'm, not, I know you, most of my viewers out there probably want me to have a go. Can I try? He's quite an easy one to pop. Okay, I'll have a go, but I'm a little bit nervous about it. But I've got to have courage here. Yeah. So I'll try it. So which one? It might not always work. So okay. We'll try him. So I've just right. popped him. Normally you don't yeah, pop no, a snake yeah. multiple times, but one okay. more time won't hurt him. Okay, I'll have a go. So please forgive me if I cock up here. But so he's quite easy to keep in here. Oh, should I keep him in here? I would, because yeah. it's a good height. Right. When, it's, when they're higher than that, I okay. would. Okay, right, so just talk me through the process then. So what have I got to do? So you put your thumb, this one on the cloaca. Right, so on the cloaca, yeah, there. Yeah. And your finger behind it, finger. put a little bit of pressure. Okay, so on there? Yep, and pull back a little bit. Pull back. So pull back with this one. Right. As in, right on the cloaca and pull it back a little bit so you can see the hole. Yeah. Yep. Then with this hand, yeah, hold there. Yeah. And put some pressure and roll it towards. This guy's. <laughs> they're wriggling all the time, so this is not easy. So roll it back roll and then roll it towards, it towards me. 
Yeah, so you don't want to push with the other thumb. But push with this thumb? Yeah. So you pull back with one thumb and you roll with the other thumb. So... So you need to be closer to the cloaca with this thumb. So okay. you right on it, on top of it. Yeah. Even more. Well, even more than that? Yeah, even more. So yeah. right over the hole. Right. Okay, and pull back. Pull back and then push, roll with this one. It's a lot harder than what we'll, it looks. We'll try it. We'll try more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try more. That's you can right. See, <laughs> you can see it's a lot harder. Jared makes it look so easy. Because the thing is, I felt like I was fighting Leonardo there. Yeah. And he was pulling away from me and I wasn't... You're really firm with them. You get in there and you're really... Yeah, it, it's all about being firm but also being delicate at the same time. Yeah. Without overpowering us. Maybe we'll have another go tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> We'll try a different one. We don't want to freak him out. And I'm, of course, don't worry if you don't get... Like, look at me, I'm not overly worried by the fact. And I know I'm probably showing my uh, inexperience here. But hopefully you can relate to me because there's a lot of people out there that are brand new to this that maybe are not prepared to have a go. I'm lucky to have Jared because he'll guide me. and I'll, I'll get it eventually. Yeah. So it'll be um, a big yippee when I can do it. Because uh, we need to be able... Even though as a father and son, I'm, I can rely on Jared to do a lot of these things. I've got to be able to do this because if Jared goes down ill, or let's say for any reason, I'm the one that's having to look after everything. I can't rely on Jared all the time, even though he's a really reliable um, son. And I've got to learn how to do this. And I want to do my you because I want to be able to be a really good experienced breeder going forward. And I'm, you know, I have a desire to share this knowledge, but it if just I, takes practice. If I take you on my journey, and it might, it might give you hope that if you're kind of unsure yourself, you might have a go. And um, if we can encourage you to have a go safely, and, yeah. you know. But let's just finish off with a couple of other things. I hope you've enjoyed this film and video. It's an insight to you on how we do things here at New Forest Morph. I was going to say one thing, which is some breeders will say on their rotation schedule, they'll, this is what they will do. They'll probably get a male ready to go and they'll put it into up to three to five girls. And this is what they might do. They might actually take their boy out, put them into a girl, look for the first lock. As soon as they've locked and unlocked, take them out and it could be within a day. The next day, they'll put that male into another girl. We don't do that. I yeah. mean, you can do that. We yeah. like to rest it though. We are taking a slightly different approach. Now, there's nothing wrong in there, what they're doing, but it doesn't suit us at the moment. We might change our thoughts on this, but we then put the male back to rest for another week. So he can then shed, wee, poo, eat, hopefully. Also, it takes time for a male to rebuild his sperm count. Just like us, really. You know, if you're having sex every day, you're going to have a very low sperm count. If you have sex once a month, you're more likely to fall pregnant. The wife's more likely to fall pregnant if you kind of hold back a little bit. And it's the same with, I think, with um, breeding here. Is that if you want to be fertile, give your pairings the best shot they can possibly get where the male has a strong sperm count he's well looked after rested the care of that animal is more important than our breeding plans that's important put them first if you put the animal first they will pay back dividends beyond measure and I think that's the key is is overcome your desire like we've got Bowser out there and I said to Jared as much as we're trying to get him locked up I'm quite happy for him to have another year year that's before the dream school the dream school yeah He's not locked. We tried. We did an experiment. So don't rush into things. Be patient in this hobby. Take your time. Learn. And you'll be fine. So we do it once a week. Other breeders will probably do a male going into three or four girls for the week. Then they'll rest them for several weeks. And then they'll come up and do another rotation. They'll do it that way. I personally think it's better off doing them once a week. Resting them. Give them a chance to do the business. So that's my idea and take on it. I hope you enjoyed that. So just to finish off, just two things. Tomorrow's video is all going to be about what we're going to do tomorrow, Jared. Oh, put me on the spot. Um, I've got oh, it. lethal pairings and yeah. What now, what are bad pairings? What and what to yeah. avoid? So I we've got loads. Thank you everyone for your comments. We're going to keep on answering your questions. Keep them coming. You are creating the content. Hamlin, again, a lovely guy. Building up a new relationship with him. I like him a lot. He's very down to earth, uh, Yorkshireman. Um, I think he loves Rob at Royal Balls and I'm gonna try and invite Rob in to give us some of his expertise on a collab if I can and bring hopefully something to our channel from an expert who I trust implicitly. He's got a lot of experience, much, much more than me, been around a while and he's very good at genetics and very good at breeding. He's got his own breeding series actually. Go and check him out. That's Rob at Royal Balls. 
and he's running a breeding series at the moment and I'd highly recommend having a good look. I've learned a lot of my techniques from him and I thank Richard for recommending him to me on that one at Predator BP. But what I was going to say is uh, tomorrow's video is actually driven by a question that Hamlin gave us which is he wants us to discuss how to avoid dangerous genetics in pairing because there are you can't put every gene the same. Mm. yeah there's potentially some genes out there that are potentially dangerous and uh, what we're saying is tomorrow we're going to go over some of the genes that you've got to be aware of that are dangerous if you mix them together and uh, we'll work out strategies of how to still use those genes safely so that you get an idea of what to watch for. So thank you Hamlin for that question, we'll cover that tomorrow. Thank you everyone for your questions and I will give a shout out to Edwin and Ruben and Miriam who also posed a question that inspired us to do today's video and I spent this morning answering their three questions in more detail. So if you want to look at the rotation question in more detail, go and have a look at that answer as well. And I'm going to end with uh, a little thought which my wife gave me yesterday, which I thought was beautiful. It's from a guy called John O'Donoghue. And in light of what we're all going through here with the lockdown and, and we need to have courage to get through this, this is a message on being courageous. Courage is amazing because it can tap into the heart of fear taking the frightened energy and turning it towards initiative, creativity, action and hope. When courage comes alive, the imprisoning walls become frontiers of new possibilities. Difficulties become an invitation and the heart comes into a new rhythm of trust and sureness. So, what I'm trying to say here, and to relate this to the snakes, what inspired us more than anything last year to do this is the COVID that came and hit this country and the world where it would be very easy to get into a negative state of mind, very easy to get down and to be uh, low. And a lot of us are, and we're tired of it, and we're just looking forward and we're grateful for the vaccines that are coming. But we turn all that negative energy as a family into a positive project. And we built this facility and it shielded us from the negative impact of COVID because we actively engaged in a good, a good cause, actively engaging in something positive will help you through this crisis. So I'm really grateful for this and sorry to get emotional but it really means a lot to me. These snakes are helping us in more ways than they realise. So those that are involved in this project or whatever you want to get involved in, embrace something positive in your life. Get a passion and a focus for something that is outside of this negative energy out there. And I promise you that will be good for your family, good for you and yourself and will help you through this very difficult time. And I'd like to leave you with that thought. And uh, sorry to get a little bit emotional, but I am half Italian and my, I do wear my emotions on my sleeve. But this is really something which has helped our family big time and I want to be able to help many people out there to get through this as well. So tomorrow we're going to talk about the genetic issues as I said. Thank you for watching the channel. Um, please feel free to leave a comment and we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye for now.